Hello everyone and welcome to Momentum channel. Here uh, in this video, what we want to do is to review and analyze four different uh, major Canadian banks that uh, are traded in the stock market, discuss which one of them is the best uh, bank to invest in right now, and uh, from there on, take a quick uh, closer look at the latest quarter earnings for that bank. And of course, at the end, share my own investment strategy when it comes to investing in the Canadian banks. Um, so I hope you find this video beneficial. I did a lot of um, research and preparation to uh, put this video together. So if you enjoyed this video, uh, please kindly uh, give it a thumbs up and share it with someone who might benefit from it. It really helps uh, the channel to grow and really means a lot to me. Uh, so without any further ado, let's get into it. Just a quick disclaimer that I'm not a financial advisor. So please um, be sure uh, to uh, do your own research when it comes to investing in the stock market. Although I've done a lot of research in putting together this video and um, really um, following my own instructions when it comes to these recommendations, um, that is not going to replace your own uh, due diligence. So be sure to uh, check your own uh, you know, risk tolerance when it comes to stock market investing, what's your time horizon and what's your plan. Uh, and from there on decide based on your own best best judgment and uh, if needed uh, consult uh, you know professional uh, financial advisors all right with that out of the way let's get into this video you might be asking why canadian banks in fact uh, the banking sector has not been performing the best uh, recently uh, due to the uh, you know pandemic and uh, all the nuances with that and the impact on the economy uh, that said i think uh, there are a couple of uh, good reasons why banking sector and why canadian banks in particular so canadian banks uh, for those of you who might not know have a long history of paying uh, dividends in fact uh, they during the 2008 financial recession where many banks cut their dividend or stopped it altogether the canadian banks and these banks in particular continue to pay their dividends so they're very reliable dividend payers and considered to be uh, dividend aristocrats increasing their dividends um, over the several years and on top of that they've also sh shown to be a very reliable investment tools in fact the value of their stocks over time is continues to grow and um, so it's not that they just maintain the dividend but at the same time their their stock value and their stock price is going down the drain not at all in fact uh, they're very reliable in that sense so overall uh, canadian max are considered to be very safe uh, and reliable sources for fixed income especially if you're thinking of early retirement or if you're uh, considering to park your money in for long term into a you know, investment tool and equity that gives you that reliable quarterly earnings in terms of dividends and also your main capital is actually preserved long term and not only that but also grows safely um, throughout time so uh, with that out of the way let's uh, take a closer look at these four uh, canadian banks that we want to review in this video these four banks include scotia bank royal bank of canada uh, toronto dominion bank or td bank and bank of montreal bima so looking at Scotia Bank, you'll see that it has a market capitalization of $74.3 billion Canadian. Um, and when we compare the last uh, stock uh, tr trading price for Scotia Bank, which was at $61.48, it shows a 28% upside compared to its 52 week high price, which is quite decent. And Scotia Bank pays a dividend, uh, which is currently sitting at 5.87%. And in terms of analyst rating, uh, it is considered to be a moderate buy at this time. Next, let's take a look at Royal Bank of Canada. It is the largest bank here in Canada in terms of market cap with $141.4 billion uh, Canadian. Looking at the last trading price for Royal Bank of Canada, it was traded at $100.14, which shows an upside of 12% compared to its 52 week high uh, price. Royal Bank of Canada currently pays a dividend and the yield is sitting at 4.35% and it also has a moderate buy analyst rating. Moving on, looking at Toronto Dominion Bank, it has a market cap of $116.8 billion Canadian and shows a 24% upside for its 52 week high price uh, given the fact that TD was last traded at $64.99 Canadian. TD Bank currently pays a dividend yield uh, of 4.90% and has a hold uh, rating based on analyst estimates. Lastly, we have Bank of Montreal, which has a market capitalization of $56.3 billion. It was last traded at $87.35 Canadian and shows a 23% upside compared to its 52 week high. Bank of Montreal also pays a dividend and its dividend yield is currently at 4.84%. And in terms of analyst rating, 
it is showing a hold at this time. Here's a quick comparison of all the measures and metrics that we take a look at and uh, discussing some additional uh, metrics for your reference. Uh, so as you can see, uh, there are a number of ones uh, here for Bank of Nova Scotia or BNS, the ticker symbol, that you see it's highlighted in green. These are due to uh, better uh, you know, performance there. For example, Bank of Nova Scotia is paying the highest yield compared to the rest of them. And what's also quite interesting for me is the PE ratio or the price to earnings ratio, which uh, tells me um, you know, in comparison to other banks here, uh, which one of them is uh, you know, being traded at a cheaper uh, price. So Bank of Nova Scotia is currently being traded at about 10.4 uh, times its earnings, which is cheaper than the rest of the banks uh, discussed uh, here um, in our video. It also has a moderate buy analyst rating and the highest uh, potential in terms of upside when comparing its current uh, price to its last 52 week uh, high price. All right, so based on these metrics that we've reviewed here and a number of other ones that I've uh, taken a look at and we'll discuss further by looking at the quarterly earnings report, I'm uh, going to put uh, my first choice on Bank of Nova Scotia in terms of the bank to invest in uh, for myself and potentially for other uh, investors. Now, you don't have to be a Canadian investor. These banks are very reliable. And in fact, many other investors, uh, even outside Canada, tend to uh, hold positions in uh, Canadian banks. For instance, Bank of Nova Scotia is uh, traded on New York Stock Exchange with the ticker symbol B and S. Let us move on and take a closer look at the latest quarterly earnings reports from uh, Bank of Nova Scotia and what we gather from that report. Uh, it was published back in August of 2020. And this, as I mentioned, this is the last quarterly earnings report that they've had so far. Back in August, when Scotiabank reported its latest quarterly earnings, it showed net income of $1.3 billion in third quarter of 2020 compared to $1.98 billion in the same period last year. Diluted earnings per share or EPS was $1.04, down 31% from $1.50 in the previous year. Return on equity was 8.3% compared to 11.5% in the previous year. As for the breakdown of Scotia Bank's earnings in the quarter, you'd see that its Canadian banking reported adjusted earnings of $433 million. The bank provided customers assistance to over 360,000 customers in Canada, with most of these efforts deployed through Scotia Bank's retail and tangerines digital channels. During quarter three of 2020, Scotia Bank received the top ranking in the JD Power 2020 Canada Online Banking Satisfaction Study for their online banking speed, security and information, as well as content experience. Scotia Bank's international banking's earnings were impacted significantly in quarter three as pandemic reduced economic activity across their footprint in Latin America. In recognition of bank's successful acquisition and integration of BBVA Chile, Scotia Bank was awarded Chile's Best Bank and Latin America's Best Bank Transformation Awards from Euro Money Magazine this quarter. On the flip side, global banking and markets delivered a strong quarter for Scotia Bank, with reported earnings of $600 million, up 60% over the same period last year. Earnings growth was driven by greater client activity and improved conditions in capital markets. Lastly, global wealth management segments of Scotia Bank reported adjusted earnings of $332 million, an increase of 6% over the same period last year, driven by strong investment performance improved market conditions and increased customer trading volumes. Global wealth continued to grow market share across the bank's footprint. And in quarter three of 2020, the global wealth management's diversified funds and portfolio solutions outperformed market benchmarks and industry peers. Scotia Bank is a leading bank in the America's core markets, including Canada, US, Mexico, Chile, Colombia and Peru. Looking at the economic outlook in core markets where Scotiabank operates and focusing on the real GDP growth forecast, you notice that according to the latest forecast, the GDP growth for all the markets remain negative in 2020, but it will turn positive in 2021 with the highest GDP growth forecasted in Peru at 8.7%, followed by 5.4% in Canada and the US. For investors who are looking for a reliable fixed income, Scotiabank is a great option. They are a reliable dividend payer. In fact, their dividend payout is showing a cumulative annual growth rate of 6% since 2009. 
What's also fascinating about these banks, such as uh, Bank of Nova Scotia, is the fact that if you invest in them and hold on to your positions long term, as these banks continue to grow their dividends, your return and your yield on those uh, positions are going to grow drastically. For example, if you look back at uh, the Scotia Bank, and in fact, um, about 18 years ago, back then, the, the shares were traded at around $17. And those same shares, if you hold on to them, you know, fast forward for the past 18 years in today's value and in terms of in their in terms of the return of the dividend um, that will be equating to almost 15.8% uh, dividend per year just for being a patient investor and holding on to your shares for the past 18 years let alone and uh, no, not even considering the fact that those shares are now a lot worth a lot more in fact as we saw uh, Scotia Bank shares were last traded at closer to $47 USD uh, when we are looking and comparing uh, how far and how much the shares have grown. Keep in mind that that graph that we just showed you uh, was actually based on the US dollars. So uh, it was taken from the uh, Bank of Nova Scotia uh, records on the New York Stock Exchange. So there, therefore, you know, the, the, the quote uh, in terms of the price for the Scotia Bank is different from what you see in the Canadian markets. As for me, I do have shares in three of these major banks, including Bank of Nova Scotia, uh, Toronto Dominion Bank, and Royal Bank of Canada. Uh, it's not still a large portion of my investments, uh, you know, given my age, and still I want to have like more investment into growth stocks, whereby they, you know, they, they have a uh, better uh, prospect in terms of growing, in terms of value. And um, that being said, you know, gradually I'm adding to my positions in the banking sector, and in particular, I'm more interested. Um, given uh, this research in the Bank of Nova Scotia, uh, BNS, uh, and, uh, tent, uh, and intent and plan to actually grow my position in this bank. Uh, I think longer term, and as I you know, continue to you know, uh, get closer to uh, my retirement age and potentially envisioning of early retirement, I want to add to my positions into uh, companies or stocks there you have a more solid, reliable fixed income, passive income coming your way reliably. And in this case, having that you know, reliable quarterly dividend that keeps on growing is really a good way for me to uh, play in this market. Uh, let me know uh, what's your approach when it comes to investing uh, in the bank. Be sure to leave a comment down below and let me know if you're invested in any of the banks to be discussed in this video or any other bank. By the way, if you haven't done that already, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up and share it with someone who might benefit from it as well. And don't forget to subscribe to Momentum channel. Here on Momentum channel, we uh, talk about investing, finances, and financial freedom. Hope to see you next time.